At Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, there is a time for everything. Then verse 8, there is a time for peace and there is a time for war. This is a time for war. It is not a time for peace. Those of you who have been praying uh, the book of Psalms, verse chapter 122, verse 6, about uh, the peace of Jerusalem, you have been praying amiss. Stick with me and learn why shortly. Number one thing that I must say, uh, I know we are, we are all we all know that there is a war raging right now uh, in the Middle East between Israel and the Palestinians. I just want to say up front that that war is not God who has brought it upon Israel. No, but he has permitted the war to happen as he has done many times in biblical history. Uh, I am reminded right now, even from the time uh, Israel left Egypt on their way to Canaan. They, they, they built a golden calf. And when Moses came, he commanded the ground to swallow those who had, you know, gone into that kind of apostasy. And they were swallowed. I, I am reminded even uh, of the city state of Ai. A-I. Yeah. Uh, and, and and when Joshua was leading uh, the armies of Israel. And it is recorded that Ai was such a small place, they even went initially with the confidence that they would defeat them quickly. But they were pounded and chased away because one of them had uh, taken the forbidden things that God had said not to, to take from the previous battle. Yeah, then you can see throughout uh, the Old Testament, Testament especially, yeah, uh, people like Gideon fighting against the Philistines, uh, Samson, actually Samson's last stance was in Gaza, the same Gaza we are hearing of today. Yeah, um, Dan, Dan, Daniel, when Israel was in captivity in, uh, in Babylon, and before Daniel, King David, yeah, he slew Goliath, a Philistine, again. Yeah, even in the time of Jesus, uh, Israel had so walked away from God. They were, uh, you know, colonized by the Romans and before that by, by the Greeks and so on and so forth. So uh, many times, uh, while God may not want war uh, as a means of dealing with people, he, 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 he being a just God, is forced uh, by our actions to decide or to determine to allow the accuser to bring a war upon uh, his own people uh, and we find in the bible that uh, people like the philistines including current day palestinians uh, are being called the sword of god yeah the sword of god and they're not the only ones even the assyrians in the bible why because many times when Israel would walk away from their God, you know God is the one who uh, uh, built that tribe, who, who birthed it literally through Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob. Yeah, uh, For them to now walk away from the God who created that nation, not that there is any nation that created itself, but that one was... Uh, created by God specially with a special intention on the earth yeah, is, is, is a great uh, sin, a great apostasy and must be corrected. I believe that is what is happening right now in Israel. So, uh, uh, you know when, when Israel went to war or when they were attacked October 7th last year, I quickly ran to my prayer closet and uh, in there I interacted with God asking yeah, why he's letting them be beaten. I know uh, the, the, the short history I've just told you about uh, them being attacked was there and I was inquiring is that what is happening and, and the Lord gave me uh, two foundational scriptures. The first one is Isaiah chapter 11. Uh, especially from verse 12 to verse 14, which he said is, is 
describes uh, the opportunity that is presented us on earth that if we will if intercessors will who are standing to watch on the wall will pray he will execute that prophecy you realize uh, every word that god has spoken uh, on sc in scripture must come to pass so he said if you pray this is what i will execute that prophetic word yeah and it is important we'll put it in context just now why we should pray actually that that prophecy is executed so i believe because we have been praying and and i and not just me there are many watchers that uh, are standing on the wall that god is actually executing isaiah 11 uh, from verse 12 to 14. the second scripture he gave me was ezekiel 36 that in the same time as he does that isaiah 11 he is restoring for his own name's sake israel back to himself he will remove or he's by this war he is removing the heart of stone from israel the the apostasy the heart the, the heart that denies or rejects god and is replacing with the heart of flesh that his spirit may dwell in them and that they may be led of him so that is what is happening currently uh, we know the war is yet to escalate some more because we have not yet seen Isaiah 17. And as, uh, as upside down as this may seem, we are actually praying that uh, Isaiah 17 happens. It's the scripture that talks about the destruction of Damascus. Damascus is the capital city of Syria. Yeah? It's not just about the destruction of Damascus that we are praying. We are pray if you read that Isaiah 17, you realize Ephraim there, even the whole Israel and Judah. Yeah, Ephraim is the ten lost tribes, the, the tribes that are yet outside of Israel, and and those that are even in Israel itself today, Judah, yeah, that they will be pressed into a position where they must where literally almost being be, be being channeled. Yeah, towards the true God, the God of Israel. That's what's going to happen. We are praying for it. Why are we praying for war? Because, number one, if we don't pray for war, if we don't pray that these prophetic scriptures are manifested now, they are going to have to be manifested in the future before Jesus comes a second time. Jesus cannot come before these are, 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 are manifested. That's why the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 21 says yeah that jesus is withheld by the heavens until the the scriptures the prophetic scriptures are fulfilled so for us who are waiting for jesus return it's not going to be an escape scriptures must be fulfilled we will live here as a glorious kingdom of god yeah and so that is what is happening so uh, for those of you who are praying i suggest to you pray two things number one Pray that Israel quickly, quickly returns to its God. Yeah? So that as it, they return to their God, they realize that they have had walked away from God and return quickly to Him. The, the war, the pains, the sufferings that are going on will be reduced by virtue of time. I know we've already had a lot of loss of life on both sides. There is no point of it continuing or there will be no point. God will stop it the minute Israel returns. I, I, I see that the accuser of the brethren, yeah, standing before God, most likely has said that Israel does not believe in their God, and therefore they need to be destroyed. Like, like I showed in my previous videos, even in that dance festival on, on 7th October, they had a huge statue of, of, of Buddha. Yeah, imagine in the promised land, in the land, you know, where all these prophets in the Bible have been, and you put a statue of Buddha, no less. It's like poking your finger in the eyes of God. Yeah, I've had many Israeli speakers saying, oh, Israel represents Western culture. It does not. Yeah, I admittedly, they are close. They, 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 they relate. After all, many uh, current day uh, Jews, uh, Israelites, have even dual citizenship with countries like like the U.S. So of course their characteristics, their their society may begin resembling. 
But remember, Israel is God's chosen nation. And they have uh, the Torah. They have now even Jesus Christ, the Gospels, the, the New Testament to follow. Yeah. So they should not aspire to represent Western culture. They should aspire to represent Bible culture and their God. And so that's where God is trying to get them to. So that's the first thing you can pray for. Second thing, pray that the armies of Israel, IDF, and all the agencies, all the units, I don't know each by name, but all of them, that God will strengthen them, God will protect them, and God will use them to, uh, you know, Isaiah 11, I, I'm remembering right now, thank you, Jesus, that Isaiah 11 talks about Ephraim and, and Judah. Yeah? Now, Judah uh, represents uh, the nation of Israel, those who are in Israel, currently and Ephraim represents the lost tribes the 10 lost tribes yeah and if you read isaiah 11 11 it says yeah that god will stretch out his hand a second time yeah he already did the first time in 1948 when he returned uh, the jews back to their land of inheritance of promise yeah uh, after 2000 years of being stateless now in Isaiah 11, 11, God is saying he's going to do it a second time. And for your information, that second time will be the blossoming of the fig tree. Fig trees blossom two times in a year. Yeah. So uh, pray for the victory of Israel uh, 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 as they fight their enemies, but not just a blind victory, that that victory will come in tandem with the Israelites themselves returning to their God. Yeah. So even Damascus is not just going to be destroyed for nothing. It has, as it is being destroyed, so also Ephraim and 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 Judah will go through a suffering that will cause them to remember their God. That's what Isaiah 17 says. Yeah. So for you who have been praying for peace, I say, I, I you have been praying uh, out of ignorance now. You know the truth of the word of God. You can go before him, even if you've been praying for asking for peace from before. You can tell him, take those my words for prayer of peace as, as precursors. Now add onto that the, the redemption, the salvation, the returning of Israel according to Ezekiel 36 and other scriptures that speak the same. That was just one chapter I've given, for example. And also uh, strengthen the army of Israel. Yeah, Israel cannot be defeated. Yeah, you, you, you watch the news. If you hear they are agreeing before the helpers of Palestine are destroyed, before uh, Tyre, which is in Lebanon, yeah, before Ammon and and and, and Moab have been captured and colonized, yeah, I have been hearing in the news what's going to happen after Gaza is destroyed. Israel will rule. Yeah, read Isaiah eleven fourteen. Yeah, they will colonize those areas, Ammon, Moab, and the others. Yeah, so there, there is no vacuum in God's plan. Yeah, it, it, the vacuum seems to be in the in the ideas or in the thoughts of men. Why? Because they have not yet accepted God's plan. So they are trying to think or oh, logically, scientifically, eh, politically. Yeah, Th they should be thinking what is the divine Creator saying. Yeah, and they will get that answer. Uh, now I intended. I, I don't want this to be very long. I want to read for you Isaiah 49 from verse 17 to the end of that chapter, verse 26. It says, Your sons hasten back, and those who laid you waste depart from you. Yeah, your sons, that's that's the, the, the lost tribes, the ten lost tribes. They hasten back. And those who laid you waste, your enemies, they depart from you. Lift up your eyes and look around, all you sons. Gather and come to to you as surely as i live declares the lord you will wear them all as ornaments you will put them on like a bride yeah there will be the glory when the when israel as a nation 12 tribes are returned it will be a point of boasting in god they, they, they are they are a glory yeah that actually our god has done what he said he will do uh, in biblical history verse 19 though you are ruined and made desolate, and your land laid waste. Now you will be too small for your people. That small stretch is not sufficient. See my videos on the territory of Israel. 
Yeah. Now you will be too small for your people, and those who devoured you will be far away. The children born during your bereavement will yet say in your hearing, this place is too small for us, which is this time of time of bereavement, as we are going now, before they come into their full inheritance, is the time of bereavement. This place is too small, that's what they'll say, for us. Give us more space to live in. Then you will say in your heart, who bore me this? I was bereaved and barren. I was exiled and rejected. Who, who brought this up? I was left alone. But these, where have they come from? You will be surprised. Why? Be, be, because the ten tribes will, will come, all of them. You, I don't want to say in a day, but when they will come, Israel will be surprised. They thought they had a population of nine million. I don't know how many millions, but it will be much more than nine million. Yeah, they will be surprised. Where have they come from? That's what the Bible is saying. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, verse 22. I, I see I will beacon to the Gentiles. I will beacon to the Gentiles. I will lift up my banner to the people. They will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. That banner is lifted. It was lifted by the attack of Hamas on October 7th. That same banner is spoken of in um, in in I, in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12, it is also spoken of in Isaiah chapter 18, verse one, uh, verse three. Sorry, verse three. We will look at it in, in the next uh, one or two videos. Kings, verse 23. Kings will be your foster father, and their queens your nursing mothers. They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. They then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Israel won't be disappointed. And those of us who are hoping in God for Israel, in this season, also, there is a Goshen for you. You will not be disappointed. Even as the world is smitten, yeah, and we look at that more in detail next video, yeah, you will not be disappointed. There is a Goshen. Verse 24. Can plunder be taken from warriors? Or captives rescued from their fears. Just see what is going on. Yeah, can can they be taken as plunder? I, I, Iraq, uh, Iran, uh, I, the 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 who this? Who's this? In Yemen, yeah, the the Lebanese, the Palestinians, all sort of people. Yeah, anti-Israel. They think they have they have plunder. They will be able to destroy it from the river to the sea. Shock on them. Yeah, shock on them. Uh, Psalms chapter 2, read from verse 1 to 6. God says he has he has them in derision. He's laughing at them. He's mocking them. Yeah, He, he will deal with all of them. Anyway, uh, verse 25, but this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder retrieved from the fierce. I will contend with those who contend with you, Israel, and contend with those. I told you it's a time of war. It is a time of war. God will contend with them. yeah. And how will God contend with them? Even by the means of the IDF and other means. yeah. Uh, I will contend with those who contend with you. And your children I will save. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. Uh, they will be drunk on their own blood as with wine. That's not peaceful. Upon a peace apple. Then all mankind will know. All mankind. The entire earth. Will know. That I the Lord. Am your savior. O Israel. Your redeemer. The mighty one of Jacob. Brothers and sisters. This is not a time of peace. It is a time of war. Correct your prayers. Now I'm doing a series. Maybe four, five, uh, six videos. Also. As, as the Lord will lead me, short ones. This probably be the long, the longest of them all. Kindly tune in to the next one and follow on, because the Lord has revealed quite a lot concerning this season, and we will be looking at it from the perspective of biblical prophecy. Until the next video, which I will be posting together with this one. God bless you and shalom.